Full-time RVers are coming off the road in droves, and the current economic climate might have you thinking about a home base. But how can you afford to do both? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to another Real Talk Tuesday, everybody. This is John and my beautiful wife, Kristen. Together, we're an ordinary path with our family of three kids plus a dog. We live in a 44-foot toy hauler that we travel all around the United States in. We've been traveling full-time for the last four years. This year, we purchased a home base in Phoenix, prepared it for short-term rentals, and traded our travel trailer in for a toy hauler. If you find yourself in the same situation that we were in, looking for a home base that you can purchase, but still be able to rent out while you full-time travel, here's how we went about doing it. Today's video, we're gonna talk about exactly how we went about that process, how we picked it out, how we set it up. And at the very end of the video, we're gonna give you a tour of it because if you watched our previous video, we did finally launch back into full-time RVing, but we didn't show you how we left the house. All right, first step, location, location, location. Where do you want to be? As a full-time traveler, you have the advantage of having been to a lot of different places, but there are a lot of things to consider. You know, what are the homeschool laws like if you have kiddos? What are the tax situations? Different states have different tax laws. What will attract your renters to that location? Stuff like that. So is, do you want to live in a big city? Do you want to live in a small town? Is it going to be a vacation home that's seasonal? for like ski homes or something like that. And if you're gonna go back to it for a portion of the year, is it a place that you want to go back to? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, that is important too. The next thing to consider is budget. Come up with Probably a budget. Probably the most important thing. Yeah, come up with a budget and stick with that budget. Our pay is a little bit interesting and so we had to go through a special process in order to get qualified. And if you are interested in that, you can take a look at this video up there. If your whole point of this is to be able to full-time travel, make sure that you're spending money on something that you can can afford to have vacant and still do your full-time travel job. You've got to think there's going to be different aspects to the budget as well. For example, the down payment on whatever it is you're purchasing. But if you're a full-timer like we were beforehand and you didn't have anything because you sold all your stuff, you're also going to have to furnish the inside of it, which costs more than we thought it was going to. Oh my gosh, to. it was so much more expensive. We thought we would spend about 10 grand. We're not going to talk specific numbers, but that was the kind of budget we had in mind. More than double that. <laughs> it was a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, to furnish. Fortunately, we did have, you know, that savings that we were able to do that, but count on furnishing costing a pretty penny. Mm -hmm. Make it as turnkey as possible. Being a full-time RVer, if you're looking for property like this, you don't want to have or mess with the time that it takes to make something nice and upbeat and ready to go. I mean, maybe if you're super handy, great but you're still going to take weeks months and we took months to yeah, get ours did. ready and it was pretty turnkey anyway so just make it as turnkey as you can that will make it so much easier for you just going forward especially if you're working full-time at the same time <laughs> right <laughs> the next thing is to consider what are your non-negotiables everybody has a set of things that they absolutely require in a house or a property. For us, that was definitely being able to park an RV and a large RV yes. on the property, preferably a place to park too, so that we could have our family or friends come and visit. Mm -hmm. That was top of our list. Make sure that you know what your priorities are in terms of things that have to be on the table. Make sure your realtor is on board with that also. <laughs> right. <laughs> we had a really great realtor. Yeah. Being full-time, one of the biggest challenges to this is once you've dialed in that location is figuring out the neighborhoods and what's safe and what's not. And there are a couple of different ways that you can do that. A couple simple tips are get on social media, just ask. There are some really neat crime apps that you can look up. There are maps on the internet that you can find of crime areas to kind of judge where it's safe and where it's not to be. Also, if you are able to find a good realtor that is local, you can often ask them because they know a lot about those different areas. It's really important, one, because you're going to be leaving the property and you'll likely be in another state. Yep. And also because you want your guests to feel safe Absolutely. when they're staying in your home. Right. 
found the place, you're getting it set up and all that kind of stuff. And now we need to figure out how it's going to work for us by making money while we're not there because we're going to be full timing. And we initially thought it was going to be travel nurses. Being a travel nurse myself, we can kind of tap into that market a little bit and work with it. We set up the location for it and all that. But as many of you travel nurses out there know, the current climate in travel nursing has changed quite a bit. Also, there's a lot of travel nurses. And there's not as many jobs available. Initially, we did list on Furnish Finders and we set it up and we really didn't get very many bites yeah. on it. You can manage it yourself and you can list it on Airbnb, you can put it on VRBO. Um, there's a lot of different sites. Your own you website, can, your own whatever. Website. There's a lot of different things. However, as we discovered when we were going through this whole process is there is so much legwork involved in finding a maintenance crew, a cleaning crew, mm -hmm. people that you can trust to enter your home when you're not there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of vetting involved and it was a lot of work. That's um, right. Yeah, so we opted not to manage it ourselves, even though we considered for a hot minute trying that out. That's what we ended up deciding to do was do a short term vacation type rental. And we hired a management company that is local there that does a lot for us. Yeah, basically they, they take care of everything. And in case you're wondering what everything means, we're gonna quickly go over what exactly is, is involved. First off, they get the renters for you, which is a huge deal. Like, yeah. the, And they also, this company specifically shoots for 50 to 60% occupancy in the summertime, which is a huge deal for Phoenix. They do so by listing it on their own website. They also put it out on Airbnb and VRBO. Prepped the house for us completely. Uh, we left, all we had to do was get all of our stuff out. They came in and they- they Deep cleaned deep, everything. Deep cleaned everything. Mm -hmm. They set up a closet with all the supplies that they would need to, to continue replenishing things like toilet paper, toiletries, um, some goodies for the kitchen, coffee. Mm -hmm. They replenish all of that into the supply closet that is locked. Professional photos of every room and everything for the listing and they look they look really nice really really nice yeah. it was so nice to be able to just leave and be like here you go <laughs> one thing i would have done different is maybe hired them a month earlier yes <laughs> After it's all set up and they're getting renters for you, they also manage the cleaning. They have their own like cleaning people that they work with that come in and clean after each stay. They also manage any kind of maintenance inside the house, any yard maintenance, even the pool. They manage mm -hmm. all of that stuff and we don't have to do any of that. Essentially, all of this just comes out of the paycheck that we would have that we would receive from renters. Obviously, there's costs involved. They're going to vary by location and it's percentage based on the renters. What I do like about this company is they don't really get paid unless the house is rented. So they're just as motivated as we are to get somebody in there. And lastly, security. And what I mean by this is being that you're away from it, I want to know kind of what may be going on at the house. So one of the things that we did was we installed a ring camera. They work great. I can access them on my phone right now. Um, if you're interested in those kind of things, we'll put them in the links in the descriptions below. But that is one thing that we did. Um, we also made sure that the company had electronic locks and stuff that they can code and give those codes to the different guests and renters. So you're not messing with having to change keys and stuff like that. Because there's somebody keeping an eye on our property all the time, and they're also taking care of like our trash and they're yep. making sure that there's nothing wrong inside the house. Mm -hmm. And if they see something wrong, they're gonna call us or call a maintenance. And we just had a call come in right. for our hot water heater that is leaking. And today a maintenance person is going out to the house and it's all covered under our home warranty, which is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> we were like, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. But the point is, is it would have been so terrible to go back after being away for six, seven, eight months. Mm -hmm. and find out that there was a leak in our garage the whole time. Feel free to reach out and contact us if you have any other questions. You can get us over at noordinarypath at gmail.com. If you do, we'd be happy to try to answer as many questions as we can for you guys or leave comments below too. Thank you for watching the video. If you've got any tips or things like that for us or if you're a short-term or even long-term rental and do these same kind of things too, let us know below. We'd love to hear feedback. And if you want to see the listing, we're going to put that in the link below just yeah. so that you can see it. But we want to show you how we left the house because we worked so hard on it and we need to share it with someone right so i hope that you enjoy watching this footage okay guys it is all set up we're so excited to show it to you today welcome to the no ordinary path desert oasis
Thanks for watching. We'll see you out there.